Welcome, everyone. Last time, a while ago, I should admit, we saw how I added viruses to the Bibit simulation. You don't have to, but it could be a good idea to watch that first if you haven't. The Bibits is an artificial life project where I try to create living digital beings through the process of evolution. If you have no idea what that means or how it's done, I strongly recommend watching my introduction video first. Both links are in the description. So in this video, we'll look at a few new things and what kind of behaviors the Bibit develops in reaction. But first, welcome to the first video intro of the Bibits ever in three, two, So welcome back. First, I wanted to announce that I decided to upload the most recent and full version of the simulation to itch.io. You'll be able to run it on your own computer and play with the same interface I do. More at the end of the video. The biggest thing I implemented is herding behavior. Just like what you see on screen at the moment, they now have the capacity to group and move together in a coordinated manner. The process is based on Boyd behavior, so we need to understand that first. Boyds are an invention of artificial life scientist Craig Reynolds, which simulates the flocking behavior of birds from three simple rules, separation, alignment, and cohesion. Interesting trivia. Craig Reynolds invented the algorithm in 1986, and one of its first practical use was in Batman Returns, 1992, to generate the bat swarms seen through the film, as well as an army of penguins at some point. Um, cool. So, um, back to it. The separation rule steers the entity away from others that are too close in order to avoid collisions. Then, the alignment rule steers the entity in the same direction as others nearby to form the actual herd. And finally, the cohesion rule steers them toward the center of nearby entities to promote keeping the herd together. Combined together, these three rules produce a fascinating behavior that emulates many animals moving together in a pretty realistic and dynamic way. The only problem was that this left their speed unchanged. In the basic algorithm, Boyds always move forward at a constant speed, while Bibits are far more dynamic. So, in order to prevent them from bumping into one another, I added an additional rule to manage the speed of Bibits in a herd if a separation vector is pointing backward. It took a while to make it work, giving scenes to various hilarious moments, like those tribal dances, violent tendencies, and whatever that is. But in the end, it works now and it makes for beautiful scenes. But we don't have time for that. I also gave the Bibits a few new genes to control the ratio by which the rules are applied to tune the resulting behavior. As an example, the ratio between the separation weight and the cohesion weight will result in denser herds. Also, a higher relative alignment rule would result in faster convergence of the herd in a particular direction. You get the idea. Now Bibits are free to evolve complex behaviors using that new neuron, like herding up when they're full or when they smell a certain pheromone, etc. I've already found interesting insights by running just a few games. First, the obvious thing is that herding seems pretty useful for the Bibits. I now see it pop in pretty much every other simulation. It looks like it helps them a lot to avoid the areas where there are no pellets, as the Bibits in front act as a wider field of vision for the whole herd, as they combine their individual field of view and movement is propagated throughout the herd. In one case, I even saw some bibits evolve an interesting simulation structure to the herding neuron. Basically, 
the neuron would only be stimulated when young, and it would gradually diminish as they would get older or when they saw food. It's hard to say for sure, as always with evolution, but it looked like the youngs would follow their parents until they developed a big enough field of vision to find food themselves. This was in a simulation where the food was pretty scarce and in low density, so it seems to help confirm that hypothesis. However, that seemed to change pretty quickly when viruses are added back in the simulation. Well, 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 it almost looked like they figured out pretty quickly that herding together in big dense packs was not a good thing to do when viruses are roaming around, not pointing any fingers. So it seems to me that the bibit that evolve herding behaviors in that situation, even basic, have a continuous disadvantage. Instead, we see a lot of them develop a negative activation of the neuron promoting a kind of social distancing that's keeping them apart. I've also seen them a few times evolve the production of pheromones when they are infected. Over time, the species in the same environment also often evolve a response to avoid the tracks left by infected others. But that's all just a sample of what can evolve. In the end, the possibilities are pretty much endless, and you would probably see completely different behaviors evolve in the simulation you run. So, uh, I've seen a lot of comments lately asking me something like, is the project still alive? And I have to admit that I've been pretty busy at my real job for the last... Um, What the fuck? But on the upside, I have something big to announce. I have, in fact, quit my job. There's a lot of unrelated reasons and details behind that choice, uh, and I'll not bore you with them. Fact is now that I'll try my hand at giving this project a real shot, and I'll also manage to give it the attention I think it truly deserves. It's not already financially viable, but I have some savings and I believe in this project. Just so you know what's coming in the future, I decided to try and put together a timeline of what I'll be adding in the project and in what order. I've already written a few devlogs about that on uh, my itch.io page and on Reddit, and I'll continue doing so in the future, so make sure to follow me on those platforms if that should interest you. Of course, that's always a work in progress and uh, is constantly evolving. So feel free to comment your ideas below uh, or reach out to, well, to one of the various social platforms where the community and I are active. We are now entering the boring part of the video where I'll try to convince you to support the project. Be warned. If the project interests you and you want to support it, my Patreon is the best way to do so financially. As a bonus, you'll get access to the Discord community as well as more frequent alpha uploads between the full releases, like every month instead of every year so far. I'll try my best to do better. I understand that's not for everyone, so if you still like the project and want to support it, there are many ways to do so. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell because apparently that's important. Like this video and comment your ideas below. Together we can bring this project to the next level and, and develop something incredible in the process. Again, I want to thank all my patrons that are supporting the project and propelling it forward. I am ever grateful and I feel like you are part of the project as much as I am. Thank you and I mean thank you all for your support, it's already been put to great use, exclusively on things that are helping the project or helping me develop it. I wish you all happiness until next time, and as always, thanks for watching.